Welcome back everyone, I know it's been a hot minute since I made a video, but you know, shit happens. Before we kick things off, I wanted to give you a quick update. I've recently decided to part ways with the Neverwinter Content Creator Program. I've been a part of it since the beginning, but unfortunately, it's been nothing but silence for almost a year. And I absolutely believe in being part of something that offers some value, and not just dead air. And if it is dead air, then it doesn't serve its purpose, and I want no part of it. So, onwards and upwards for brand new adventures, and who needs them anyways? they kind of needed us. So in this build video, I'm going to try to keep things as simple and as straightforward as possible and user friendly. I'll share my top choices for both single target and AOE scenarios along with some alternatives. But what's important to know is that not everyone may be able to achieve this build exactly as I'm going to describe it to the letter. Various factors can also influence its effectiveness. Things like possible future nerfs or adjustments to powers and their effectiveness. So this build might change for the long haul and might not be as effective depending on those nerfs or changes. So this build is just meant to provide a general framework so you can have some idea of how to build your rogue in the future regardless of the meta. So feel free to customize the build with different gear, experiment and add tweaks as needed. But ultimately as it stands now based on my personal experience this build has had remarkable results. So if you do decide to adopt it to the letter you're likely to be very happy with it. Just keep in mind that a huge part of a build success is not just about the items and the gear attached to them but how you utilize them and your overall skill level. All right, time to begin. Roll it. There are four races that are the best options for a rogue, and the way you should look and think about races is which one will help you with your ratings the most. So when I see the Dragonborn, the Metallic Dragonborn, the Gif, and the Wood Elf, all I see is 3% crit strike and power, or 5% combat advantage and 5% critical strike. I see them as rating fillers, and everything else about them for me is irrelevant. So based on what ratings each race provides is how I make my choice, and in our case, Wood Elf is the best option. And the reason it's the best option is because power is the easiest rating to cap due to the raptor meta. Then there's combat advantage which is not easy to cap but it's easier to cap than some other ratings but critical strike is harder to cap than both power and combat advantages. So that's why we choose wood elf as our main race for that 5% critical strike. That being said you can choose any race you want and still cap your ratings. These options are just to make the journey a bit easier. So there's literally no wrong choice there's just a slightly better choice. Now let's talk about ability scores which are located on your character screen and also selected during the main character creation process. There are three choices that are particularly well suited for our rogues. Strength, Dexterity and Charisma. Strength provides bonuses to stamina regeneration and physical damage boost. Dexterity offers benefits in terms of critical severity and movement speed. And Charisma grants bonuses to Forte and Recharge Speed. Any combination of these three ability scores can work effectively for a rogue. Personally, I prefer to prioritize strength and charisma. However, if you find yourself struggling to maximize your critical severity, incorporating dexterity to boost your critical severity percentages can be beneficial. And you can also mix and match allocating points to strength, dexterity, and charisma as you see fit. And these are the possible three setups that I use. One setup is strength and charisma, as you see on your screen, and the other one is strength and dexterity. But the one I prefer the most is dexterity and charisma, which gives me critical severity, movement speed, recharge speed, and forte. And just like races, there is no wrong choice here. Just use what you want to cap a certain rating or get recharge speed, movement speed, or physical damage boost. Completely up to you, I'm just showing you my choices. As far as what paragon path I use, I actually use both. I use Whisper Knife for AoE, and I use Assassin for single target. Whisper Knife is clearly much better than Assassin in AoE situations, and Assassin is clearly much better in single target situations than Whisper Knife. Keep in mind, some changes are coming, some nerfs to Toxic Blades, some nerfs to the Rogue here and there, which might change all our preferences. But for now, everything is the same, so I have nothing to say. So Whisper Knife AoE, and Assassin for single target. Now let's get into gear selections, starting with the helms. Here I have three main choices. The Abyss Conqueror's Healing Guard, the Enchanted Brigand's Assassin Hat, and the Serene Hood of the Dragon Hunter. Obviously my main choice and the one I use the most is the Abyss Conqueror's Healing Guard for the 10% critical strike that you can get at max stacks. The same goes for the Serene Hood of the Dragon Hunter which has exactly the same equip bonus and also gives you 10% critical strike at max stats. We're just using basically the upgraded version of the Serene Hood of the Dragon Hunter. And my third alternative 
is the enchanted brigands assassin hat. Now the only way you should be using the assassin's hat is if you're already capping or close to capping your critical strike. Then you can switch from the conqueror's healing guard to the assassin's hat. But if not, just stick to the abyss conqueror's healing guard and you should be set. Accuracy also isn't as important as crit strike, so make sure crit strike is the first thing you want to cap and only go to accuracy when you have nothing else to do. So the abyss conqueror's healing guard is our main choice. For armor, there's four possible choices. The mighty cuirass of the dragon hunter, the tactful leathers of the dragon hunter, the abyss conqueror's mauler's plate, and the sharp jacket of the dragon hunter. As you can see on your screen, you already know my main choice, and it's going to be the mighty cuirass of the dragon hunter. For its equip bonus, it gives me up to 7.5% accuracy and 7.5% combat advantage. My second best choice would be the tactful leathers, which would give me instead of accuracy and combat advantage, 7.5% critical strike and 7.5% critical severity. And then of course we have two other alternatives, which both give you just critical severity up to 15% of it just by attacking your enemy. The Abyss Conqueror's Mauler's Plate and the Sharp Jacket of the Dragon Hunter are exactly the same, just one of them is an upgraded version of the other. And the only reason I use the Mighty Cuirass of the Dragon Hunter is because it also makes it easier for me to cap all five ratings. Having 7.5% accuracy and combat advantage makes it a lot easier for me to possibly cap five stats, which I do. But if you use Critical Strike and Critical Severity, you'll have a much harder time capping your accuracy, even though your combat advantage can still be capped. So that's the only difference between the two in my opinion. Mighty Cuirass over Tactful Leathers, just so I can cap my fifth stat a lot more efficiently. But either or is good, if you're not that into accuracy, just pick the Tactful Leathers, but if you're trying to cap all five stats, you pick the Mighty Cuirass. And that's just how I look at it. For arm choices, we have the Abyss Conqueror's Healing Mitts, the Mighty Van Braces of the Dragon Hunter, the Tactful Leathers of the Dragon Hunter, and the Astral Raiders Wrist Guards. Obviously, my main choice is going to be the Abyss Conqueror's Healing Mitts for the 3% Crit Strike and the Forte. It's not a bonus that we usually see on gloves, but it's a really good bonus for me and it helps me cap my Critical Strike. But you can also use an alternative like the Mighty Van Braces, which will give you extra damage, or you can even use the Tactful Gloves that will give you extra recharge speed. That is totally your call. But I think picking the Abyss Conqueror's Healing Mitts is a better choice because in my opinion capping your ratings efficiently is a lot more important. And in scaled content I'd use the Astral Raiders Wrist Guards for the up to 20% extra damage. For boots, I use the Enchanted Brigands Assassin's Long Boots, and the reason for this choice is strictly because of the critical severity. It increases my critical severity by 7.5% when I'm 20 feet or closer to my target, which for a rogue isn't very difficult because we're always up a boss's or mob's butt. An alternative choice could be the Abyss Conqueror's Mauler Greaves that gives you 5% combat advantage, or the Wasteland Wanderers that give you another 5% combat advantage. The Mauler's Greaves is just the upgraded version of the Wasteland Wanderers with slightly different ratings, a higher item level and a higher combined rating. But the main go-to choice is of course Enchanted Brigands Assassin's Long Boots. There are also other alternatives that I didn't put in this video that you can use damage boots or what have you, but these are my three main, so I'm just presenting my three main choices. When it comes to weapons, there's a lot of weapons you could look at. You could look at the perfect weapons, you could look at the Mirage weapons, you could look at the Mastercraft weapons, you could look at the Stormforged, and the newest Solarium weapons. But for me, as far as I go, my main weapon of choice is the perfect weapons. And the main reason why is because it helps me get another 5% critical severity and 5% critical strike. It also gives you a damage boost, and it also has a decently high item level. And the ratings aren't bad either. Critical strike, critical severity, a high combined rating, you can't go wrong. But if the Mirage weapons didn't exist, or when they get nerfed because they're definitely getting nerfed soon, I would stick to the perfect weapons in both AoE and single target situations, unless I'm in wild space. In wild space, I definitely use the solarium weapons because they are better in wild space. Decent alternative weapons are also the mastercraft, which are still good if groups are using them, like if five people are using them in your party, and really, really good for especially groups that are struggling to stay alive. And then you have your Stormforge weapons, which are absolutely free from the North Ark Reaches campaign, and they're still really, really good. So if you don't have the perfect weapons, use Stormforged they'll serve you just fine. So perfect weapons are my go-to choice and will continue to be my main choice outside of wild space because the mirage weapons are certainly getting nerfed very soon and won't be as effective in single target. But for now, until they get nerfed, the best weapons in single target for dungeons like Demon Web Pits or Master Temple of the Spider, Mirage is definitely the best weapon. But because they are due for a nerf very soon, I would stick with a perfect barb or use the Stormforge as an alternative.
So as far as artifact sets go, I only have one choice with no other alternatives. Obviously, if you don't have this set, you can use whatever you have until you get it. But I absolutely love this set. And it's only a two-piece set. You don't need an artifact to go along with it, which is usual for sets. But in this case, that does not apply. These two combined give you tons of strength, nine to be exact. And it also gives you accuracy and recharge speed. So for me, these are the best options. There are other options out there, but I just don't use them. Hence why I don't present them in this video. Now let's talk about some rings. Most of the rings I use are both good in AoE and single target situations, but I primarily use the Platinum Abyssal Loop and the Sapphire Abyssal Loop. One gives me 5% accuracy and 3% action point gain, and the other one gives me 5% more damage when I use my encounter powers. Those are my go-to choices normally for both AoE and single target, but there are situations where I will swap out one for the other just to test things out or because I'm feeling goofy. Some alternatives is the Emerald Abyssal Loop that gives your at will powers 8% more damage or you can use Elistri's Beauty for the 5% combat advantage or you can even use the South Sayer's Ring of Absolution from Dragon Hunts that gives you 7% crit strike. They're all decent options but the best ones in my opinion are by far the Platinum Abyssal Loop and the Sapphire Abyssal Loop. And for AoE situations when there's a lot of mobs around you, you can even swap to the Amethyst Abyssal Loop which gives you up to a 6% damage increase when you hit 3 or more enemies. Just remove one of the rings and use this and test it out for yourself. It's a good alternative but I don't normally use it in AoE either. Now let's talk about shirts. My main choices is Lulz Embrace and the Luminous Flare shirt. One will give you up to a 1 second cooldown to your powers and it's a 10% chance and the other one can give you up to 3.5% damage for 10 seconds. Both are really good and everything is situational. So like if I don't use Lulz Embrace, you could also use the Corroded Shirt of the Dragon Cult if you're having problems with combat advantage or you can also use the Brigand Soldier's Tunic that gives you 8% damage against Drow and Spiders. And personally I do switch out my shirts depending on the content I'm running. But in general, I would use Lost Embrace along with the Lost Embrace Pants, which will give me a set bonus, which is a 3% AP gain. So for pants, there's really no wrong choice or bad choice. It just depends what you want. You can use Dwarven or whatever pants you have. I see pants as fillers because their bonuses are usually not that good. So for pants, I use Lost Embrace to complete the set with a shirt that gives me the 3% AP gain. So just stick to Lost Embrace and you're good to go. Now let's talk about armor reinforcements. You can basically choose any armor reinforcements that you like. It just depends on what ratings you are missing. But personally for my build, I need critical severity. So I place those on my head, armor, gloves, and boots. And for my neck two rings and belt I use major combat advantage jewel that gives me 880 combat advantage. If you're capped on combat advantage you can switch that to stamina and the critical severity one you can switch out for any rating that you need. It could be accuracy, it could be whatever you want. The choice is ultimately yours. Now I'm going to talk about stat priorities really quick in case somebody doesn't know. The main stats to cap in order is power, combat advantage, critical severity, critical strike, and accuracy in that exact order. So try to cap the first four, and if you can cap the fifth one as well, it will increase your damage, even though it's the least important rating. Now let's talk about artifacts. These four are the main ones I use that you see on your screen. I use the Crystal of Souls Flight, Merrillic Mask, Wand of Domination, and Portobello Spelljammer. And basically these choices are depending on what ratings they give me. Power, Accuracy, Combat Advantage, Critical Severity, whatever. As you can see on your screen, they're usually triple statted. But one of these artifacts does get swapped out for a debuff artifact if needed. Some of the main debuff artifacts I use is Dragonbone Blades, the Crystal of the Souls Flight, Assassin's Dice, Halister's Blast Scepter, and there's many, many more. These are just the ones I prefer to use when I run with my groups. But make no mistake, you will need to have a debuff artifact to help your groups when you're doing endgame content. As far as enchantments go, what you see on your screen is basically what I use, with slight variations depending if I'm running AoE or single target. It's basically just swapping out one enchantment for the other, and it's a game of mixing and matching. But in general, I use Mythic Jades for the Critical Strike, and the Mythic Amethyst for that extra 2500 combat advantage. In defense, I always use Garnet for the extra defense, and of course I use a Garnet in my utility for the extra forte. For my bonus, I'll use Mythic Recharge for single target, and Mythic Movement for my AoE situations. The combat enchantment never changes which is always going to be the lightning flash for the extra damage it does and the ratings it provides and of course for overloads always use devil's precision for the extra accuracy and critical strike and your extra overload can be changed depending on your contents you can run a demon slayer you can run an undead slayer whatever you need for the specific content you're running but the devil's precision always remains in place 
When it comes to summon companions, there's a lot of variations out there, but the ones I found to be more effective for myself is the Regis for AoE and the Green Scale for single target. Of course, you could use whatever you want, like the Pseudo Dragon or, or whatever else you might have handy, but these are my main choices and this is what I normally stick to. When it comes to utility companions and companion gear, the companion gear stays the same across all boards. So whether I'm using Whisper Knife for Assassin, it's always the Starbound Sword Knots that I use. And obviously the main enchantment is going to be the Mythic Companion Enchantment, which is the best one and the only one you're advised to use for the extra bonus damage it gives to your companion. When it comes to your enhancements, which is that purple thing, you can switch depending on the needs of your group. You can switch to precision, you can switch to a debuff, it just depends. But in general, I use acute senses to cap my combat advantage. For AoE, I use raptors to cap my power, I use the spine devil for its damage, I use alchemist for critical strike and combat advantage, I use neverwinter knight for the 7.5% outgoing damage, and the bigger they are for the 5.6 to 8.6% extra damage, depending on how strong your target is. In single target, the build's almost exactly the same. The only difference is I swap out the Spine Devil because it doesn't work that well on single target bosses, and I use the Batiri for the 11% damage versus bosses. For AoE encounters, I use the Spore Explosion, which gives me 19% extra damage to my attacks when I've infected the mobs. And I use Precision for the Critical Strike and Critical Severity. In single target, I usually use Big Beast Crushing Hand, but sometimes I swap out for Tongue Lash, it just depends on the situation, and I use Ferocity for the extra damage. When it comes to insignia bonuses and collars, use Gladiator's Guile for the extra movement speed, and I use Tactician's Precision for the cooldowns to my encounter powers every time I use it daily. I also have Executioner's Covenant for the decreased defensive ratings, but the increased offensive ratings, which means power, combat advantage, critical strike, and critical severity. And of course, my last choice is Enchanter's Hex for the extra damage it deals when you control enemies. When it comes to collars, I use the Sturdy Crescent for the extra 5% damage to my encounter powers. I also use the Wayfaring Barbed for the 5% critical critical severity increase. I use the Unified for its 5% movement speed, and then I use a Supportive Crescent that gives me 5% stamina gain. And lastly, I use the Practical Regal because you kind of have to use it as a filler to give you item level and combined rating that gives me rough Astro Diamonds, which doesn't matter in damage, but the item level and the combined rating does contribute to your damage, so you fill in that spot. Keep in mind, you don't need your callers at Mythic to be effective. Dropping down from Mythic to Epic is only a 2% decrease, so it's not really that big. And the cost gap between the the two is pretty huge so you can actually use epics and be completely fine and still cap your stats but if you do manage to slowly get them to legendary and then mythic it will be more damage and slightly more percentages but it's not a must-have you're totally fine with epics Obviously, I use Disheartening Strike as one of my main at wills. By using this, you increase how much damage the target is taking from you, and it also applies a DOT effect with a decent magnitude damage. My alternative at will is Cloud of Steel, but I rarely use it, and I only use it if a mob is very far away and I need to hit it because I'm not as close as I should be. My main encounters, of course, is Blade Flurry, which you use from Stealth. I also use Path of Blades and Smoke Bomb. Then, of course, I use Tenacious Concealment, which increases my stealth regeneration by 50%, so I can get the stealth back quicker to apply more damage to targets and of course lastly i used advantageous position which for five seconds after leaving stealth i can maintain my combat advantage and i actually take 20 percent reduced damage from all area of effect and ranged attacks a very good class feature to have and a must have for feats i use shady preparations of course to reduce all of my cooldowns by two seconds after entering stealth then i use dark reimbursement when you use an encounter power to leave stealth you regain 25 percent stealth back then we use return to the shadows when you activate an encounter power for each target hit you can refill up to 7.5 percent of your stealth and while you're behind your target that effect can be increased to 10 percent and then of course for our fourth feat we use shadowy opportunity which is our absolute best feat when you leave stealth you gain shadowy opportunity for three seconds and for each one of your hits you can deal an additional 150 50 magnitude damage. And lastly, we have Ambusher's Haste. While stealth, your powers deal up to 40% more damage based on how low your stealth bar is. For Assassin, of course, we use Duelist Flurry, which is our main damage dealer, and applies bleeds to our target. Our second at will is Gloaming Cut, which I personally prefer because it fills in some extra action points that I need, and it hits kind of hard too. For encounter powers, I like to use Smoke Bomb, Wicked Reminder, and of course Assassinate. For dailies on Assassin, I like to use Shocking Execution. I rarely ever use Whirlwind of Blades. For class features, I use Invisible Infiltrator. Whenever you use a daily power, your stealth meter is refilled for 5 seconds afterwards, and your damage is also 
also increased by 5%. And of course, the other class feature is oppressive darkness. When you have combat advantage, your powers deal an additional 20 magnitude damage to the target. For feats, obviously we use toxic blades, which is getting nerfed soon, so this won't be as powerful as it is now, but toxic blades should still be the go-to even after nerf, but we'll see. So basically, toxic blades just applies the DOT, and that DOT applies the 20 magnitude weapon damage once every three seconds for 15 seconds, and it can stack up to five times. But we all know because it's broken, it stacks way more than that currently, depending on what you use. Then, of course, we use Knife's Edge. Activating a daily power reduces your cooldowns by four seconds. This is very essential during an artifact call. You can basically get a free set of three encounters right after you use a daily when you use this. Then I use Duelist Expertise or Skullcracker. It doesn't really matter. They're both really not that good and around the same line. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one you use. I just use Duelist Expertise. It's, it's not that big of a deal. For my fourth feat, obviously, I use Back Alley Tactics. You deal up to 10% more damage based on how low your action points are. And lastly, you can either use Execution or Shadows Flurry. It doesn't really matter. They're pretty similar. One doesn't outperform by the other by a lot. So, so it's just a personal preference. These are just the feats I prefer because, you know, some of them are just really, really bad. For boons, I'm not going to go through them one by one. You can see them on your screen, copy paste them or follow along through your character as you're looking at my video. You could either copy these or have a look for yourself and make some changes if you like. For guild boons, it just depends on what your guild has available and what you need. Personally here, I think I'm using critical severity, defense, movement speed because it's probably AoE. I switch to revive sickness when it's a single target and the PvP one doesn't matter. So you can alternate depending on what you need and what your guild has available for you to use. And lastly, I'll just show you the rotation for single target real quick. The first thing you want to do before an arty call is apply your bleeds. So you'll do a couple of duelist flurries, and then when the arty's called, you already have your bleeds going. And then once the arty is called, you go stealth, smoke bomb, wicked reminder, assassinate, shocking execution, which will reset all your encounter powers from your tactician's precision insignia bonuses, and of course your class feat called knife's edge. So then you go back into stealth after shocking execution, you hit smoke bomb, and then you hit your mount power, and then you follow up by your assassinate to try to get it into the five second window, and then you follow up by wicked reminder, and you can use your uh, dragon fire or hawk or whatever after that. And that's basically the most optimal rotation you can use for a rogue in its current state with some broken mechanics and some broken stuff that's going on that's going to be fixed soon. And of course, during an article. And as you can see here, I'm practically capping all five stats because the 5% from the combat advantage comes from the tutor, which will take my combat advantage to 90. And I'm not in a group of five right now, so my power is only 70%. But once I get into a group, that will hit 90 as well. So I'll be 90, 90, 90, 90. Granted, I swapped from the critical strike helmet to the enchanted brigand to get all 90s, but that's an option I have, so I used it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried not to talk too much about everything and make it as simple as possible to follow. The video will be updated if changes happen at some point. But until then, leave the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, become a member if that's what you want. All right, see you guys around. Peace.